Hello, again, Chris Esplin here, back with more Firebase, and today I'm going to cover custom authentication. In particular, I'm going to cover custom authentication with Twitter digits. So I'm call I've written a small little module, node module, call I called it Firebase Digits, and it's a Firebase custom auth to Twitter digits integration. It's not very much code. Probably could have written it yourself, but you don't have to. You can just use the little chunk of code that I wrote if you like or write it yourself. Anyway, so the gist of how this works is, well, let's, let's start at the beginning. Let's start at, let's start at how Twitter digits works. Okay, so, so with Twitter digits, you put, you put digits on your page. Uh, you initialize it with a consumer key. Now you're gonna have to log in with, you're gonna have to get this consumer key from Twitter from particularly from Fabric, which is an offshoot of Twitter. Um, Fabric is sort of the the system that houses Twitter digits. So you're going to have to set that all up. Uh, it's actually not really set up very well for web apps. So you may have to actually register an Android or iOS app to get it working, which is super obnoxious. Kind of ticked me off, but I had an old iOS demo app sitting around that I registered. So this is all under my iOS demo app. Okay. So once you get your consumer key there, you can do digits in it. Um, and then the next next important step is digits.login. Now, now this is, this has got some I've got some buttons in here on my, my demo. Um, but let me I'll just walk through this demo code step by step, line by line, so you can see what I'm doing. So first, I've got digits, then I've got my Firebase, and I'm going to initialize my Firebase. Okay, and initialize app with the config. I've got two buttons, one's that call, one that calls login, one that calls logout. Next step, I call digits.init with the consumer key. So now digits is all initialized. Then I'm gonna do a Firebase auth listener. This is specific to web. I'm, I'm sure there are different uh, ways to do this in um, Android and iOS, but I'm, for now, we're sticking to web, that's what I know. So firebase.auth um, dot on auth state changed function user. Now, if you're authenticated, you get a user back. If you're not authenticated, you get null. So if there's no no user when you first hit the page, I'm going to auth anonymously. Firebase.auth sign in anonymously. This isn't going to be important for security considerations in a bit um, because if I don't have any sort of a, a relationship with Firebase, then um, I can't write to anything except for a totally open node. Now, if the node is open, then anyone can watch my authentication system, my authentication process go through. Like anybody, like anybody with like this API key, basically anyone who can hit my site and can see my API key can then go in and watch it. So I need to create a relationship with Firebase so I can have a secure transaction with Firebase, even if I'm not fully authenticated yet. It's just, I can get one sort of secure transaction. Okay. Um, now, if I've got the user and the user is not anonymous, then I'm going to show the login button. If it is anonymous, I'm going to hide the login button. Th that's just a little bit of web logic there. Ignore that. I got my logout function, which is just Firebase on auth sign out. Okay, next is login. So login is the one we actually care about. That's when I click this button, that's what's going to happen. Okay, so let's click login here. All right, login. Is digits initialized? This is a check I ran because I was having trouble when it wasn't initialized. So run it, hey, it's initialized, all right. So I'm gonna create a ref to Firebase. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna work underneath, um, I'm gonna work underneath uh, digits. That'll be my, my path. So it'll be my quiver2, .com slash digits, and I'll work all under that. So my ref is going to be to the digits uh, attribute there. All right. So next. All right. Stepping through. Digits login. Digits login. Great. All right. Play through. All right. So now we've got the digits login process is going to happen. All right, I've already done an auth with digits on this browser before, so it knows who I am, so I can just click continue. Awesome, okay, I click continue. All right. Woo! So they kind of jumped ahead a little bit. 
Wow, that jumped ahead. I shouldn't have should have done that quite so quickly. Let's let this play through and I'll do it again. Okay, let's log out and let's do this again. This time I won't close that window because that appears to cause a problem. And all right, so we just stop right here. Okay, so we're gonna log in again. I'm going to click continue and I will not close the window. There. All right, so what do we have? First is I'm gonna get my UID right here off of my current user. So that current user, this UID is currently a current user right here. You can see it, hopefully. Current user is an anonymous user, but it still has a UID. I'm gonna use that UID for my security rules, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so I've got my UID. I've got my login ref, which is going to be in this. I'm just going to be slash logins slash UID. Now logins is specific to Firebase digits, so I just whatever path you give me in this case slash digits. I'm going to start. I'm going to work off of slash log digits slash logins. So you're going to have to add it to slash logins. So slash login slash UID in this case. So login ref. Um, and just to make it like doubly clear, what's happening here? Login ref dot to string oh I haven't actually set login ref there we go login ref dot to string you'll see that's my firebase slash digit slash logins and then the uh, the UID of my anonymous user okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it just in case it's there um, I wouldn't want I wouldn't want any stray stuff sitting around. Not necessary, necessarily in your app, but I'm doing it in mine. And the next thing I'm gonna do after I've removed it, so I, I, I clear that out and then I set it. Wow, that happened way too fast. Oh gosh, that happened so fast. All right, well, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to, have to, uh, do this a little differently. This is clearly not not doing what it's supposed to do in terms of in terms of uh, stepping through the app nice and slowly. So we're actually going to we're going to run this in no debug mode over here. All right. So instead of just running it all as fast as it can go we're gonna debug the heck out of this all right so let that play through all right so we already know we get the UID and the login ref now I want to stop here at this set and then I want to stop at the handler okay so you can see this again all right here we go we're gonna log out we're gonna log in Continue. Great. Oh, 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 okay. All right. So what's happened? We've got a stop here in our child ad handler in Firebase Digits. So what happened is, and I'll go back here. I've got a node server that's running this Firebase Digits module. Firebase Digits takes a Firebase app. In this case, I used env.json to initialize it because I don't want to show you know all my initialization all the time. I wanted that to be sort of a little hidden. So... I've got env.firebase. Um, you can see that looks like it looks like this env.json.dist. I've just got a live version here with a service account that is private. Okay. And then all I got to do is I pass in is I require Firebase digits. Um, you're if you install this, you're going to install it on your own. You'll you'll just do var fire base digits equals require firebase digits this is if you install off npm in this case it's working off of the actual text file so i didn't so you need the, the dot slash but if you're installing off of npm you don't need dot slash it'll just find it um, and you should install off of npm i've got it registered with npm now so that's not a problem okay then you create a version of firebase digits uh, basically initialize one you pass in the Firebase app, just Firebase in this case, the initialized app, and then you pass in a, a, a path, in this case digits. 
that's going to have to match with your front end path. So in your front end, you see over here, uh, I've got my ref is database.ref.digits or digits. And here in test, it's I'm passing in the path digits. So it could be like that, or like that, doesn't matter. Okay. And then I call firebase.digits start. That just starts listening to this path, digits slash logins. Okay. So we've got our, our listener here. Logins on child added, child added handler. Okay. So the child added handler got called because something got added. So what do we have here? We've got the, the ref, we've got the login, service provider, and credentials. Okay, so let's let's do a quick little look at what this is. The ref is your ref to the login, so this particular login. Um, if I do login ref dot to string, you'll see that this is it. It's this long guy that I pushed on over here. This UID is the anonymous UID that I pushed on over here. That current user UID. Okay, so it's going to get it, and it's going to it's going to check, make sure everything's there, and then it's going to verify it with it's going to verify it with um, with Twitter. Okay, so let's let it play through. So play, play, play. All right. So what you'll see here is currently there's a record here that looks like this. It's got my auth my service provider and my credentials. So I'm gonna pull this over here so you can see it play through. All right, so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna set the token. So I set the token. And this will fire off my child ad listener in my browser. And then it will immediately remove the token. So now it's all removed and cleaned. Okay, so you see how that that added the token, then it removed the whole thing. It's acting like a message bus. So right now it's cleaned up after itself already, but I still have a bunch of child added events that are gonna get handled. I'm on my breakpoint here in the browser. Okay, so my handler, my child added handler, it's still gonna fire. So the first one, the first value it gets is the uh, for the, is for the service provider. So if I if I type in um, snap dot key, you'll see it's a service provider key. All right, so that actually that's not an error key or a token key, so I'm going to ignore it. Uh, play through, play through. That's distracting. All right, so let's do it again. Snap dot key. The next key is the auth key. I'm going to ignore that one too. All right. Okay, so that happened too fast because of my breakpoints over here. So we're gonna have to do it again without these breakpoints to get it to to get it to work. So we're gonna log in again. Uh, yeah, if I have breakpoints running over here, it it wrecks it. So we reset it, as explained before. Bam, 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 bam. It happens. Um, let's do a scope.watch just so you can see snap.key as it goes through. So right now we're skipping that one because it's the auth service provider. We're skipping that one. We're skipping that one. We're skipping that one. Hey, we got a token. All right. So the token, we're not going to skip the token. We're going to handle the token because that token is our auth token. So check it out. So I got this token. This is a Firebase custom auth token that I can now use to log in in my browser against Firebase and get a custom auth. So if the snap.key is a token, I'm going to turn my handler off. Not Don't need to listen anymore. And I'm going to call Firebase.auth sign in with custom token. There we go. Sign in with custom token value. Awesome. Now, if you're watching, my off state changed. And I'm no longer anonymous. 
I've got this refresh token and I've got this UID, which is my Twitter digits UID. Okay. So this is all a little, a little complicated. I, I, I want to, I mean, it's, I well, I documented it really well in the readme how to use this. Um, but I, I'm trying to, I want to explain it the best way I possibly can here for, for you. Um, all you got to do from the node side is register the thing like this. Okay, this is all the necessary code on the node side. I've got some listeners for logging purposes and the, the demo page is getting served up from here. But all you really need are these, what, four lines? Register your Firebase, pull in Firebase digits, create your version of Firebase digits, and then call that start on it. And it'll listen to your Firebase at the slash digits, in this case, digits, um, uh, endpoint. The rest of the magic is all in your index.html. And what your index.html needs to do is it goes through, it logs in with digits and it gets, um, it gets a response from digits, which includes OAuth echo headers. You're just setting those OAuth echo headers um, to digit slash logins slash U the UID, this is an anonymous UID for security purposes, I'll show you in just a second. And then the uh, my Firebase Digits um, listener will basically respond by adding a token, uh, a Firebase token that is associated with your new Firebase Digits account um, to this, this login ref. And so you just gotta listen for it and grab that token the moment it comes through and sign in with the custom token. Okay, I know it looks really complicated. It's not that bad. Uh, you can actually copy paste this and it should work in on your site. This is this is a pretty good boilerplate. Okay, now I gotta show you why this works in terms of security, why I need the custom, or the, uh, why I need the, um, the auth. All right, just a second, where are you friends? I've got, do I have too many windows going on here? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up my Firebase console. All right. Now, if you haven't seen my security rules video, this is maybe, or you don't know security rules yet, this is gonna be a little tricky. If you know security rules, this should be straightforward. Let's hope. Okay, come on. All right, rules. So if you noticed, I'm working under this digits, well, it's been deleted, a digits node, it's digits, go, okay. So in my rules, I've got rules for digits slash login slash dollar UID. The UID that you write to has to match your auth UID. Now, so when I anonymously auth, I get a UID on my session with Firebase. So Firebase then, in the rules, populates auth.uid with that UID that I got from the anonymous auth. So as long as that matches my wildcard path, so digit slash login slash UID, as long as those match up, I can read and write to that node, but nobody else can. That's what makes this transaction secure, is the anonymous auth. With that anonymous auth, anyone can listen in on it. It's not secure at all. I mean, if you got an app that's doing this, it's trivial for me to just listen to all your digits auths going through. So you're gonna need to set up anonymous auth. Um, pretty simple. I mean, it's this it's this line of code right here. Firebase.auth, that's signed in anonymously. And then you just make sure that you, um, your login ref has to have that UID, that matching UID as the last step. And you should be good. Okay, ask me any questions in the comments in the video. I'm always happy to cover, to, to respond to comments and shoot another video if I need to, to, to clear it up. The repo is right here at Delta Epsilon slash Firebase Digits. And I have gone to town on the readme. It is all in the readme. Hopefully you can figure it out. Now again, this, this is just, I mean, this repo is really just for this little chunk right here, this, this Firebase Digits right here, this is the, this is the repo, the module. And if you need to look over the code, it's only, what, 66 lines, 67 lines? It's not a lot of code. You can definitely ingest and figure this all out pretty quickly. Okay, so thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.